NATO, Nick Saban, who and looked Nato's. remarkably uncomfortable. <laughs> if you watch the video, he was not cool being where he was. Uh, he was an innocent bystander uh, watching a, uh, a multi-car collision happen. They were on stage in an event in Birmingham that marked the 50, the, the start of a 50-day countdown to the World Games, which are being hosted in Birmingham later this summer. And Nick Saban touched on the ways that name, image, and likeness have impacted the game, didn't pull any punches, went right after Texas A&M. These were some of the quotes from Nick Saban directly. It's going to be difficult for the people who are spending tons of money to get players. You've read about them. You know who they are. We were second in recruiting last year. Texas A&M was first. A&M bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, and likeness. We didn't buy one player. But I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. That's the part of the answer that we labeled a second ago as a call to action. Nick Saban goes, well, if everybody else is doing this and we're not doing it, then we've got a problem. And then to make it even a little bit more local than a story that's just one state over and is incredibly national today, he brought Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, and Jackson State into it. He said Jackson State paid a guy $1 million last year who was a really good Division I player to come to their school. It was in the paper, and they bragged about it. No one did anything about it. These guys at Miami that are going to pay basketball there for $400,000, it's in the newspaper. The guy tells you how he's doing it, but the NCAA can't enforce their rules because it's not against the law, and that's an issue. That's a problem. I do think that like a lot of things, if you listen to the entire, what was it, seven-minute answer that Nick Saban gave to a name, image, and likeness question, then maybe there's a little bit more context. A little bit more context. He was talking about the issue as a whole. I am not defending Nick Saban here. But it's no fun to listen to the entire seven minutes. It's fun to pull out where he takes shots at Texas A&M directly and Jimbo Fisher directly. And then it's fun to read the part about Jackson State where he goes after Coach Prime, who, by the way, he's in an insurance company commercial with. And they're both being paid handsomely for that um, endorsement deal and then Deion Sanders coach prime goes on either Twitter or Instagram last night and says that he was awoken in his bed by his son Shadur with the uh, the information about the story and says oh you better believe I'm going to respond about this and this lie from coach Saban There were all kinds of unwritten rules that were broken last night and this morning, by the way. Codes of conduct, gentlemen's agreements, um, what, what is it, honor among thieves, ratting out guys in your own profession. All of these unwritten if, rules got thrown smooth out the window. We're going to stay with the analogy. The word is kayfabe. That's the, the word for the illusion of the show. Okay, don't take the don't take we the all know it's too a, far. I'm just saying that's that's the word here. <laughs> Kayfabe. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah. So, honestly, why? Because I think the answer is obvious. D- despite again what college football media people are saying, oh, it's just a warning. It's just a warning. Is it really as simple as what I think it is anyway? A guy that's had his grip on the sport for 15 years since he got the Alabama job. Nine of the last 13 national championships Nick Saban has participated in. And he sees a situation where somebody's got more and he's frustrated. Is that that really as simple as this is? Why now? Why this? Why Jimbo? And why in such a way that is so out of precedent for the long history of dirty actions in college football involving the institution that he coaches for, by the way. Why now is the simplest answer the right one? This is something that he doesn't have the most of and he wants to change it back to the old way so he will again. What's the play here? Where did this come from? 
Uh, Ross Bjork explained it to you, Borky. There is a saying, an emperor who loses their dynasty lashes out. He seems to be making excuses. I thought he was going to go, like, emperor with no clothes. But... By the way, yeah, yeah I want to get uh, get to Ross and talk a while on that because I, it's impossible to be as that bad be tomorrow. at PR as he is. It's impossible to be as bad at PR as he is. But anyway, sorry, hate it. How lucky are we that AL.com sent a reporter to this? Like, I understand Saban speaking, and that's probably a big deal, and this World Games thing. But in today's media coverage, they could have just been like, eh, no, nah, we're not going to go cover that. I don't think they showed up thinking they were going to get the biggest story of the offseason when they walked in the door. No, it was Michael Casagrande, right, who had the uh, video? No, Michael Ro- Michael Rodak is his name. I'm sorry, Michael Rodak I don't was know. the uh, – okay. I don't know where Casagrande is. He should maybe I just, this was his beat. What's he doing? Well, I saw some tweets from him last night, but maybe he was retweeting the, the Michael Rodak stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think we lose sight of the fact that the way that Alabama football and Nick Saban is covered in the state of Alabama is different than the way it's covered in Mississippi with Nick Saban and, or excuse me, with uh, Hugh. Who's the coach at Ole Miss? Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach. I think those are the two names that I was looking for. <laughs> I mean, what? It, it's covered different. I mean, Nick I mean, Saban. Nick Saban does not break wind in the state of Alabama without a microphone nearby to yeah. catch it. It doesn't happen. I mean, we and we were at the the, the the Neshoba County Fair when the the head coaches were all there, and, and I get that, but I mean, just a random Wednesday night, and boom, and, we and get he, a nuclear explosion. He knew what was going to happen. We do get this message, and I really, if you are the only listener that believes this, I'm talking just to you. But if there's anybody else that believes this, you need to understand how wrong you are. This message says maybe Saban just cares about the sport. Of course, everyone in your line of work wants to assume the worst. You say Saban cheats. Prove it. Okay. I really want you to understand something. He does not care about the sport. <laughs> I'm sorry. I he couldn't even he cares about it. himself. You want to know why? Because up until NIL came, he had more money to spend on recruiting. He had more analysts than anybody else. He had the most Everything. Everything he had the most of. He doesn't care about parity in the sport. He only says that now because he doesn't have the most of the most important thing in the sport now. If he truly cared about the sport, he would have been advocating for years for staff limitations, caps on recruiting budget, caps on overall budget for the athletic department, make things equal. But no, he coached in nine of the last 13 national championships in part because he's a phenomenal football coach, a great evaluator of talent, and builds a great culture. Gets a bunch of really talented, probably egotistical football players to buy in and win. But he also had the most of everything. If he truly cared about the health of the sport, he would have been doing this for years. He's only doing this now for self-serving purposes. That's it. Well, and a, another example is to the f- to the fact that he doesn't really care about the sport. I mean, we, we used the example earlier about, you know, RPO being a safety issue and playing fast offensively being a safety issue and not good for college football. And then what did he do? He immediately went out and implemented those systems because he saw them as advantageous to his program. If he genuinely was concerned about those issues and the safety for his players, he would say, no, look, it, winning is the most important thing, I, I'll give you that, but actually it's not. The safety of my players is the most important thing, and I believe in a different style of football, and so we're going to prove to you that we can win a different way. He didn't do that. He saw that there was an advantage in playing the way that other teams were playing, and so he did it. So, yeah, it's lip service. When it, 